But we begin tonight with the former president of the United States, who keeps reminding us who he is and what he would do to this country if he were to return to the White House. Today, while in South Carolina, the prolific liars campaign lied again after Trump talked about buying a gun. That's a Glock. Oh, the Glock, Glock actually did that. And uh, these, these are actually great sellers for us. We sell them. Can you sell them with the picture? <laughs> we, we do. It comes exactly like this from Glock. Wow. Good and they sell well. Yes, they, sell they like me. Well. That's 45. They like you. I got to buy one. That's 45. Buy one. Buy one. Sir, sir, if you want one, this one. No, I want to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I want to buy one. Ha, ha, ha. His campaign informed the media that he had, in fact, purchased the gun which is technically illegal, given his felony indictments. But I guess they only pursue those crimes if your name starts with Hunter and ends with Biden. About an hour later, the Trump campaign informed the media that he actually, in fact, did not buy a gun. No surprise there. Because lying is Donald Trump's safe space. He does it all the time. He's even been indicted and sued for it, lying about returning classified documents, lying about the election being stolen, lying about E. Jean Carroll. I could go on and on and on. Well, now Trump, the habitual liar, is set to address a handful of MAGA union workers later this week, claiming that he's always had union workers' backs. And when he says that at his address, he'll be lying again because his administration did the exact opposite of supporting union workers when he was president. The Trump administration made it harder for small unions to organize, weakened bargaining rights, and stripped protections against anti-union measures. Those are the actual facts. Meanwhile, Joe Biden, the most outspoken pro-union president in modern American history, will be hitting the picket lines tomorrow in Detroit, and we'll have coverage of that on tomorrow's show. Trump, who earlier today told supporters that Jeb Bush who was Florida governor, not president of the United States, started the Iraq war. Yeah, he's not only a liar, he is clearly unwell. He spent the weekend firing off unhinged rants, essentially calling for the execution of outgoing Joint Chiefs Chairman and General Mark Milley. On his pretend Twitter, the four times impeached, civilly liable for sexually abused septuagenarian wrote that General Milley's phone call to reassure China in the aftermath of the storming of the Capitol was an act so egregious that in times gone by, the punishment would have been death, adding to be continued. For the record, that call was explicitly authorized by Trump administration officials. But, but, but just stop and think about that for a moment. The former president of the United States openly suggested that a decorated U.S. general should maybe be killed for making a phone call to protect this country from its mad president. In a healthy democracy, what Trump did, let alone what he did on January 6, 2021, would end any future claim that he had on the presidency. Instead, today, one of Trump's allies and January 6 co-collaborators, Congressman Paul Gosar of Arizona, not only echoed those calls, but made them even more explicit. In his weekly newsletter, Gosar wrote that in a better society, quizlings like the strange sodomy-promoting General Milley would be hung. Here's the major problem for the majority of us living in this country. These calls are not innocent words made in a vacuum. We have already seen what can happen when Trump speaks. And all you have to do is watch video from the assault on our Capitol. As The Atlantic points out, academics have a formal term for exactly this type of incitement, stochastic terrorism. An influential figure with a large following demonizes a person or a group of people. The likelihood is strong that some small number of followers will take those words literally. These are incredibly dangerous incitements to violence. And Trump didn't stop there. He continued his deranged rants, calling NBC, and specifically this network, MSNBC, an enemy of the people worthy of investigation and prosecution for treason. Now, the rest of the media can lead with questions about Biden's age, but don't you think that it's a little more consequential to ask the American people if they support threats of violence against an army general? and calls to retaliate against the media, maybe violently. Sadly, this country has become so numb towards Trump 
and his party's openly authoritarian threats, that he doesn't even have to hide what he wants to do in a second term. Aside from his threats against General Milley and those who work at this network, Trump has plans to bomb Mexico, an act of war, by the way, plus firing hundreds of thousands of career civil servants who refuse to do whatever he wants, herding homeless people into camps, cutting funding to schools that teach critical race theory and gender ideology, which isn't actually a thing in public schools, reinstate a Muslim ban while expanding the ban to include, quote, communists, Marxists, and socialists, watch out France, the Netherlands, Italy, Italy and Germany, all countries that have socialist political parties. He would also ban funds for transgender care and send national troops to major cities to essentially implement martial law. Oh, and defund the FBI. And that doesn't even include his desire to permanently stay in power and his plans to nationalize a ban on abortion access. America, is this what you really want? And if that's not clear enough, do you really believe that we should be rewarding a Republican Party that is bringing this country to its economic knees with a possible government shutdown just because Trump told them to? And because they don't want to help feed the poor or lower the cost of prescription drugs or support the fight for democracy in Ukraine? Do you really think that we should reward people who are paid to govern but who refuse to do their jobs? Trump seems to think so. He's telling Republicans to shut down the government unless they get, quote, everything, including, of course, impeaching Joe Biden for whatever they think of today. And the very real threat of a shutdown, amid that threat, Republicans found time to hold a hearing on that this week, Biden. Perfect. Joining me now is Steve Schmidt, former Republican strategist and founder of the Warning newsletter, podcast, and YouTube channel. It is great to have you back, Steve. I don't even know where to begin, so I am just going to let you respond to that. Because the thing is, is that Donald Trump is being very open about what a second Trump term, which would be a permanent, apparently, Trump term, would entail. What do you make of the fact that it does seem to me that the country, and in many cases the media, seems numb to it? I think there's no question that the country and the media is numb to it. The threshold in this moment is very simple. Everything that Donald Trump says should be taken literally and seriously. What he did today was threaten the employees, the journalists at NBC News. What he said more broadly is he's going to shut down the free media in the United States. What he announced today as a candidate for president in 2023 is he's coming after the American media. He's coming after his political opponents. Why is he running for president? He's running for retribution. Retribution, according to Donald Trump, is a philosophy of avenging anybody who was against him. So we are on the edge of an abyss in this country, and it seems that there is a paralysis, a numbness, a total disregard for the clear and present threat. There is something extraordinary happening. The people who are trying to tear down democracy in the country keep telling the rest of the country what it is they plan to do to such a degree that they have announced their plans six months into 2025 to have taken apart the whole of the federal government. Now, since FDR's time in office, the legislative metric in the United States has been 100 days, not six months. This is a racist code whistle to every white supremacist in the country because it's how long it took out off Hitler to take Weimar Germany to a complete and total dictatorship. That included, by the way, the military swearing an oath of allegiance, not to the nation, but to the Fuhrer. And the military was the institution amongst many in Germany that were the last holdouts to this. But once he was in power, they were the first to submit. And what Donald Trump is signaling to the officer corps of the American military, you get in line behind me, the leader, not the idea, not the Constitution, or I'm coming for you, too. This is an epically dangerous moment.